Hello everyone. So I am Dr. Premal Patel from Silver Rock University. As we are going to continue our session of JSP Java Server Pages. So as you know, last time we have discussed a few things. Uh, that is the overview of JSP. So basic informations about JSP, how it works, or what is uh, difference between JSP and Servlet. Then we have discussed about the life cycle of JSP. That is also we have discussed that how it works in the background and the phases of JSP that we have discussed. So today we are going to discuss about the JSP processing. JSP processing here that is uh, also useful to explain that in a background while we are sending some request uh, through the browser to the server web server so in the background how it works so those are the things are explained through this jsp processing model here you can see the model we have uh, put it in this uh, presentation so here you can see the client uh, who is going to send a request it is we can say it is a one kind of client server model but in JSP, how the client server model is working in the background, which processings are going through it. So that is also important to understand for uh, better programming. So uh, you can see the first step that uh, while client is sending some request, so that request is sending through the HTTP uh, or the web browser and in that web browser, while you are sending the web request through the JSP page, that means the web browser will send the HTTP request to the web server as a JSP page. Now that JSP page, which is the request is recognized by the HTTP request, which is recognized by the web browser. And for JSP page, by checking the extension of that file, whether the file is that is a JSP file, it is checked by the uh, web server and then it will be the web server forward that HTTP request to the JSP engine. Now, what is the role of JSP engine? So the JSP engine load that uh, JSP page from the uh, storage or disk and it converts into the servlet contains. So that will be read and generate the servlet contains through the JSP engine. Now, we all know that while it will be con converted to the servlet file, that means it will become a Java file, right? So the JSP engine that will compile that servlet into the executable class file and the forward that original request to the servlet engine means while that uh, java file we will compile it will create one class file that class file will be uh, the executable file which is forwarded to the servlet engine and then after the output will be produced by the servlet engine so it will be passed to the web server inside of http response so that response will be received to the uh, net to the client. Now the web browser load that static page and it will load into the uh, browser. Thus the user can view the dynamically generate, uh, generated the pages. So that is the basic uh, process we can say that how JSP processing is working. The one uh, more things that uh, I want to focus here that accept the translation or transition phase of JSP to the Java, that means from JSP to servlet. The whole process is called uh, similar like a servlet. So as earlier also we have discussed that it is similar like a servlet uh, lifecycle or processing except the conversation of JSP to the servlet page. Then after it will be similar as a servlet. So that is how it works. That is uh, JSP processing phase. 
two more things that uh, we need to see here. Uh, one is a translation time and second is a request time. You can see here the translation time. That means the time taken to generate the Java sublet. So the time which is taken from Java file to sublet, uh, sublet files from JSP to sublet. So you can see here in this diagram, the JSP file read by the Java sublet and that Java sublet ng and JSP file is converted into the sublet. That means in a Java file, those uh, time period is called as a translation time. That means the JSP file is translated into the sublet uh, or in a Java form. Now the request time. Request time that means time taken to invoke a sublet to handle an HTTP request is called as a request time. So time is time taken to invoke as a sublet. That means that while we compile that file, that is a class file, that class file is executed through the uh, yeah, that sublet uh, engine and it is uh, generated the HTTP response. That time, that executable time is called as a request time. Now, uh, let us discuss about JSP application design with MVC. So, MVC is a very important uh, topic for uh, coding if you are working with a backend uh, programmer. So, you, you might be aware with how MVCs work because uh, generally the large uh, applications are mostly used this MVC architecture for proper functioning and executing the applications. So what is the full form of MVC? That is model view controller. So these are the three major uh, component of these MVC architectures. Through that, all the applications are managed from client to database and the request response that we are uh, properly managed to this MVC architecture. So here we need to understand that what is model, what is view and what is controller. So in a uh, Java, if we talk about the Java, in a JSP, you can see the model that means Java B. Java Bean is uh, considered as a model. JSP is considered as a view and controller is one kind of, we can say it is a sublet. So Java Bean is, it is represent the business layer. Okay. The JSP that represent the presentation layer, that means view, what we can see is UI, UX that we can see in the front of the screen that is view component and controller that is manage the flow of an applications. So uh, to understand this JSP process better way, uh, let us understand the detail this MVC framework that how it works. So first of all, come to this model. You can see that is a Java B. So in Java B, it deals with the business logic. So whatever the uh, programming logics, the functions you have created, all those logics are in the model, right? So it deals with the business logic application model. Model contains the data of applications. Also, it contains class and the uh, connections of database. So the model store the data given by the users and deal with the database. So, but uh, you can see here the client, while client is uh, open, the browser, it can, it is able to see the view, uh, view of that browser screen. So view that means it is user interface. It works to read the display information fetched by the controller and it it can be uh, in form of HTML, CSS, JSP, etc. So the user view the UI through the view. 
so users can use the uh, this JSP. JSP is you can see, we can say it is a page, uh, similar like a HTML page, right? But the difference is here we can insert the Java code inside of JSP. So the JSP page that is view in uh, the screen. Now the controller, it seems as an interface. You can see the controller is an interface. It acts as an interface between the view and the model, which will get the request from the view and it will pass to the model layer. And then after whatever the response will be fetched from the model, it is given to the view. So that is controller uh, or we can say servlet and filters. So we, that we can create in a Java web application. So the filter or through the servlet, the JSP page is communicating with the business model or the model or Java beings. So this is the basic uh, MVC architecture. The main importance of MVC architecture for uh, easily the applications can be communicate with uh, the clients or with the browsers and it functions smoothly in a web based. So for the purpose of that, the MVC architecture is very important. And mostly the applications are built through the MVC architectures. Now let us come to setting up the JSP environment. So how to uh, set up for coding or uh, in a JSP environment. So basically in a JSP or to the Java, we, we require the JDK for basic Java. Then we can uh, set up the web server, any web servers uh, where we can put our uh, projects where uh, which we are going to create in a JSP. Then we have to start that uh, web servers. Here we, are, we will use the Tomcat servers. There are so many web servers are available. So different varieties are there. Anyone that you can use for as a web server, right? Then uh, if you want to connect connectivity with the database, so database application also you can use like MySQL, Oracle, or any supported database that also you can use for uh, connectivity in JSP. So uh, here we are going to use the NetBeans. And through the NetBeans, we will uh, do all the practicals of JSP. So let us start the practicals now. I'm going to start the NetBeans. So uh, while you will open the NetBeans, you can see the ID 8.2 version that I am going to use. You need to take care about while you are using any NetBeans. You, you have to take care that the JDK which you have inserted or we have uh, stored, then the database application which you have uh, stored in your computer, those all should be uh, able to communicate with each other. So you have to verify the compatibility. It should be compatible with each other. The whatever the version of NetBeans that you are using, the database application, suppose you are using MySQL. So the version of that MySQL should be uh, capable to communicate with that version of NetBeans. So that compatibility you have to be verified. That is very important things. Otherwise, uh, after successfully installation of all the things, it might be create some issue that it is it can be able to uh, communicate with each other. So, uh, first of all, you need to verify the compatibility of that JDK. Then the 
uh, NetBeans and that database application. Now you can see here in the screen, the NetBeans uh, is open. You can see in a left side, there are so many projects that is already uh, prepared. So now we are going to create a new project and that project we will do all the practicals or we will do all the programs in that specific project. So how to create new project in NetBeans? So first of all, the NetBeans that is uh, providing the facility as an editor as well as facility to compile and run the uh, Java application. So the for purpose of that, we are using this NetBeans. Here we can uh, insert the web server that is also provided by the NetBeans. The editor is also provided by the NetBeans. So there are so many facilities are provided. So we are going to click, right click here, the new project, we'll click on new project. The Java web, so basically right now we are going to web applications. So, so in the Java web, web applications, we will select and give next. The name of project. So uh, the project is, let us give the name JSP JSP demo. Okay, JSP demo. That is the name of the project I have given. The project location where this project is stored in this disk that is also given here. We can uh, change the location from here also. The project folder means you can see after the end of that part, the name of our project is inserted the JSP demo. And we are using the libraries extension also. So give the next. Now you can see the server settings. So whatever the servers are available in your computer, it will be displayed here, Apache Tomcat and Glassfish. These both uh, servers are available. So we will use Apache Tomcat. Uh, you can use add the more server from here also. Suppose you want to add some additionally servers. So you can uh, add from here, right? Java Enterprise Edition versions 7 web that is by default we are uh, going to next. Now, it is asking that when, whether you want to work with any frameworks of Java, that means uh, you can see the frameworks Spring, then JSF, Struts, Hibernate. These are the different frameworks of Java. So, do you want to uh, work with this kind of any framework? You can choose the any framework and give the next. So, according to that, the libraries are uh, generated. Uh, in a, your project, so you can use those all the functionalities. So these are the basic advantages of this NetBeans. Right now we don't require any framework. We are just using com, uh, basic uh, web pages of JSP. So it doesn't require any framework. I just going to finish this setup. So this is the basic setup. How we can uh, prepare for the applications of JSP. You can see here the JSP demo. In the left side, the project, the JSP demo is available. If you will click here, you can see the web pages, source packages, libraries, configuration files. These all the things are automatically included. So that is the benefit of using this NetBeans. So these all the things you can retrieve automatically, right? 
even in a web uh, web INF, you can see the first basic page index.html is also available. So these are the things you can uh, get. The libraries, basic libraries that you can get here, the JDK 1.8 is here. Apache Tomcat, which we have selected, it is also here. The configuration files are also you can fetch, which is generated automatically while you have created this project. So these are the basic advantages. Now let us start with uh, one JSP file that we are going to create. The first JSP file. So right click on the pages new JSP. What the name you want to give of that file? So uh, my demo. That is my demo. Okay. The name of that file I have given. The project is JSP demo and the basic uh, configurations that we are not going to change for, for that. And let us finish. After completion, or while you finish that uh, button, you can see on the screen, you will see some code. You can see here the my demo.jsp file is available here, right? my demo.jsp you can see in a left panel also left side panel that file is also available that is jsp the extension is jsp so any jsp file first time you will open this is the basic code it will show uh, let us understand that what is the basic content it is showing so this is the comment section in jsp page this is the comment portion. This is the opening comment and closing comment. It is for it is used for multi-line comments. So what they have commented here. So the document name, when it is created, and who is the author, at which time, at on which date it is created. So this basic details is shown in this uh, file. Then after it is you can see here the uh, some code like page content type text slash html page encoding utf8 so what it is actually going to explain so it is a page encoding uh, it specify the format of data to be read from the files for the file system page encoding is used for specifically which type of file system while we we have uh, written that code in our lemon language but while it is working in a background in a computer so it will fetch those all the characters from your uh, code so whatever the code you have uh, added here those all the characters are fetched by the uh, compiler or editor for that specific file systems are used so that is explained. First of all, that content type is explaining that the text I have added here that is in form of HTML. So it is in form of HTML, the contents I have added. The page encoding that is UTF-8. So what is UTF-8? UTF that is uh, stands for UCS transformation format. So UCS transformation format where the UCS that is stands for uh, Unified Computing System that is developed by the Cisco. So that is uh, universally uh, the things we have to by default use, everyone have to. So it is easily uh, the file system can read that character set. So those character sets format is in a UTF-8 that we have used, right? Actually, the UTF-8 is represents the Unicode characters because Java supports the Unicode characters, right? Like uh, ASCII value that we all know. 
So RC code is also a subset of Unicode. So the the Unicode UTF is included all kind of the characters. Almost all the com characters are uh, available in this that component. So that encoding of page is basically we will use UTF and the code what we are writing the text in form of HTML form. So in HTML you can see the tag are generated here. So uh, content type is also we have discussed that that is in form of HTML that means everything is in the tag. The head HTML tag then head then body you can see the title this meta tag is also explaining that the which character sets we have used and the content types is what we have explained. So that is we have already defined here that content is in HTML. The title is JSP page and the okay uh, in the body part we have mentioned that first code is hello world. So that is by default code is available here. Suppose I want to run. Okay, before running, you can see uh, which browser by default you want to use that you can choose from here. Right. So whatever the browser you will choose that will be uh, you can use from or you can change from here. So that browsers sometimes because you know browsers compatibility issues are also generated. So we need to check the code in different browsers. So for that purpose, you can uh, change the browser and you can verify your output. Now I'm going to right click here and run this file. So while you will click on run this file, you can see the JSP demo run is started. And it will, it has started the background process. And then after it will show the output. Or if there is any error is there, it will also show here. Well, first time you are uh, trying to run that project or program, it will take few uh, seconds or few minutes. Then after, uh, while you uh, continuously run the project, it will take a less time. Browser refuse to debug this tab. Close the Chrome developer tools or try. Let us try another browser. So sometimes we need to set up uh, those, you can see here the output, hello world. So same things that we can run in a, our JS uh, Chrome also, yes, the output is visible here. You can see it has been already run and let us close further and after changing the browser, let us try again. So while we are running that file, let the Chrome is open. and it shows the output. So this is how actually it works. Now we are going to start the coding here in different JSP programs that we will run here. So from next on uh, session, we will discuss about different JSP elements. So those all elements 
which is very important for JSP coding that we will discuss in the next session. So right now we have covered the setup of JSP environments, then the MVC architecture, how it works, then JSP processing that how basic JSP file is processed uh, from client to server and request response model while we send any uh, request to the web server. So those all things we have discussed here. From next, we will start to code and we will learn those all the elements through the practical. So here I am going to stop this session. Thank you everyone.